Today, we're going to be talking about cod liver oil versus fish oil. I'm going to dive into this topic and give you kind of my clinical take from a functional medicine perspective. If you enjoy the video, please let me know. Give me a thumbs up. I'd love to see your comments down below. And this will be live. So if you have some good questions, I'm happy to take them as we go here. All right, so let's dive in. So in the world of functional medicine, we're always trying to work on reducing inflammation, right? Inflammation is one of these things. Basically, when your body starts to break down more than it builds up, that's kind of a good overall definition of inflammation. You may see extra things like extra arachidonic acid, usually fats like omega-6 or more prostaglandin E2 associated with more inflammation. You see things like cytokines or interleukins that are an inflammatory hallmark, right? And different foods have more inflammation, you know, propensity, grains, processed sugar, foods that are highly allergenic, more soy, foods that are harder to digest that have more anti-nutrients in it. Sometimes even healthy foods that you could say like, oh, nuts or seeds or maybe some eggs or butter or dairy. Sometimes those can be inflammatory for some people as well, especially if your gut is compromised and you don't have good digestion. Now, one of the things that we'll do in functional medicine where we'll try to use certain fatty acids to push the body into a more anti-inflammatory state. So we're going to do that with good, healthy, saturated fats that are not going to be prone to oxidation, grass-fed meat, you know, healthy proteins from animal sources that are going to be pasture-fed, grass-fed. Now, we may also supplement and use certain fats like fish oil. Fish oil is wonderful because it has two fats in there that are very, let's just say, supportive for inflammation reduction called EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid. That's a 20-carbon fatty acid. And then we have decosahexanoic acid. That's a 22-carbon fatty acid. So really good fats, good inflammation reduction, um, good raw material for the brain, especially DHEA, very helpful for the brain. And then we have cod liver oil. So now we take the cod fish, which actually the cod fish could be in a supplement to make fish oil. So like in my line, we have one called Omega Supreme, and we use like mackerel and sardines, very small fish because they're less likely to bioaccumulate mercury. We want to buy them and we want to source it from sources that are going to be independently testing it, making sure mercury, those levels are down. And our line will also add a lot of times some um, rosemary or vitamin E to stabilize the fatty acid so it's not going to be prone to oxidation. And we'll also do things like some rosemary or vitamin E in there too that can be helpful just to – and then you know encapsulate it, make sure it's really dialed in to keep the oxidation down. Because omega-3 fatty acids, they're really prone to oxidation. Oxidation is when you lose electrons, it oxidizes. What does that mean? It's like uh, cutting open an apple. That browning you see, that's oxidation. Or if you put butter in the frying pan and go too long and it starts to get brown, that's oxidation. So we don't want fats to oxidize. They're becoming unstable. They're accumulating free radicals. The fatty acid's becoming damaged. You don't want to take that fat in because that fat will deplete your antioxidant reserves so you can handle that fat.